we are going to discuss the issue about fitness testing and how we can use that to optimize uh, performance in football. And we have to first concentrate on in terms of what are we going actually to measure when we are dealing with football. We know that football has a number of different types of activities. We know that we have to perform towards the end of, uh, of the game. That means that they need to have an intermittent endurance capacity. But the players also have to perform very intensely during the game. So we are talking about high intensity intermittent exercise. That means that the faster the player can recover, the better it is, because in this case, the player can do more. We are talking about repeated sprints. A top class player is sprinting around 40 times in, in a game. So we don't know exactly when it's going to happen uh, because the situation may require a very rapid uh, speed or high speed. And therefore, the player also needs to have a good ability to repeatedly do sprinting. We also talk about force development capacity because some actions are requiring a high very high power output, like a, a jump before a, a heading, like a kicking, where the power output is, is very high. So that ability is also going to be tested. Agility is another issue related to performance in, in football. We know players that do have that agility are also performing very well in football. Messi is one of the one with probably the highest potential in terms of agility. That's important as well. And then uh, the balance is also an issue. How well can we uh, make sure that you keep your body in the right position in a given situation in the game? So there are a number of components we need to concentrate on in terms of determining their level. And by that, having an idea about how we are going to train each individual player. Uh, just to say that if you want to read more about this issue, there's this book, Fitness Testing in Football, that uh, will cover some of the aspects we are dealing with uh, today. So there will be a natural follow up of the webinar. But before we uh, are doing testing, we need to understand why we are testing. And there can be a number of issues related to that. One thing is to study the effect of a training program. That's the first point here. We have changed the training maybe. Maybe we are doing more speed endurance training as we have discussed previously during the season. Did it have an effect? Maybe we could see in the game. Hopefully we could see in the game, but we can also here get an objective measure to what extent that effect was actually present. One another aspect is to motivate the players to train harder. You know that yourself, doesn't, don't you? When you know you have an exam coming up, you put a little more emphasis into actually studying a bit more because you know somebody will look at your performance. And if you know you're going to be tested, that is also part of a motivation for the player. And that is closely related to the next point, to give players objective feedback. By testing, we can tell them what are your uh, high capacities, where do you have a lower capacity, what do you have to work on in relation to the way you're playing in the game. So giving objective feedback is also an issue in order to make the players getting a better understanding why we are doing uh, the training. Uh, to develop a fitness profile of the player, as we talked about, if they have some weakness, they have strong parts, uh, if we have that profile, we can better prioritize the training. Even uh, you may consider football is a team training. We need to always keep in mind that we have to develop each player in the team, in the squad. So therefore, having that profile could allow us to say this player should spend more time on doing speed training, whereas another player, for example, should spend more time on the endurance capacity. At the end, it depends on what the player is doing in the game. The, the next point is to make players more aware of the objective of the training is, is closely related to the previous one, the objective feedback. You have this level, we want to improve you, that's why we're doing this training today. 
Next is to evaluate whether a player is ready to play a competitive match. It's very difficult to find an, an objective test where we know that, but we can have some sort of test that at least give us an idea where is the player in relation to his normal or top uh, performance level. So uh, could be a player coming back from an injury, then we have of course done a rehabilitation program we have prepared the player and then we test the player and say okay you are at the same level as you usually are when you're playing you are ready to go back to the game we cannot we cannot test every aspect of the game so there are always some certain uncertainties but i have experienced that some players didn't believe they were actually ready to play and when we then did the testing we saw that the player was the same level and in this way convinced him that he was actually uh, able to conduct the game. So in this way, it can also be used, uh, the testing. To plan short and long-term training programs, pre-season, for example, we have done three, three weeks of pre-season. We're doing another test to understand to what extent have they actually improved their level. And if they haven't improved enough, we may have to do more of that type of training. If they have improved sufficiently for that, we change the training. So short-term, long-term training program is depending on, on the different test level. 